Joining us now, Texas Senator Ted Cruz. He has embarked on a multi-state bus tour ahead of the midterm. Senator Cruz, what state? Are, you look like you're home in Texas tonight. Are you home tonight for once? Uh, I, I am home tonight, but we're right in the middle of what's a 17-state bus tour. So we've been to about half the states. We've got about the other half to go. We, we started in Texas, did four stops in Texas. Then we went to New Mexico. Then we did two stops in Arizona. Then we went to Nevada. Then we went to Utah. Then we went to Kansas. Then we went to Missouri. Next, we are headed to Ohio and North Carolina, Maryland, Virginia, Tennessee, Georgia, Florida, Michigan, and then back to the great state of Texas. All right, we do. All right, I'll, I'll up you an ante. Okay, we were in Georgia last night. We'll be in Pennsylvania tomorrow night. Uh, we will be in a state that I can't announce yet on Monday night, uh, and then another state that I'll be in next week also. So we're going to be out on the road as well. The midterms are that important. When you look at the Senate in particular, we got to look. Marco Rubio always has a tough race. He's winning. He's up in the polls sure. in Florida. Herschel Walker. Uh, you've got Tim Scott. I'm not worried about him. Ted Budd is running a good campaign. That's a tough race. I believe General Bolduck can win in New Hampshire. Dr. Oz has to yep. win if the Republicans yep. have any yep. shot at at taking back the Senate. Uh, we got Ron Johnson joining us later. We got J.D. Vance. We got Eric Schmidt. We got Blake Masters. We got Adam Laxalt. We got Tiffany Smiley out in Washington. Of all those places, what do you predict? What are you seeing? What are you feeling on the ground? You know elections. Look, I think there's enormous energy. I think we're going to retake both the House and Senate in the House. I think we're going to end up with a big majority. I think we're going to end up with a majority in the range of 30 to 50 seats, which is historic. It's on the order of what we saw in 2010. I think that same sort of election is coming in November in the Senate. I think we're going to take the majority, and I think we could be anywhere between 51 and 57 seats. I'd probably predict right now 53 or 54 is, is where I think the Senate is. You know what's really striking? You were listing where you're going, Sean. I was, I was listing where I, I'm going. You know who's not doing that? Joe Biden. Joe Biden is nowhere to be found in Georgia. He's nowhere to be found in Nevada. He's nowhere to be found in Arizona. He's nowhere to be found in New Hampshire. He's nowhere to be found in Ohio. He's nowhere to be found in North Carolina. Why? Because none of the Democrats running want to be anywhere near him. They're running away desperately from the failed agenda of the radical left. That really says something when the president of the United States is, is, is a millstone around the neck of these Democrat candidates. But they've been rubber stamps for the radical left agenda for two years, and, and now they're forced to face the voters. You know, I, I like to keep things simple, Senator. Number one, the economy. Average families paying $7,200 more because of Biden inflation, a 41-year high, than they were paying under Donald Trump. We're paying double the yep. price of gasoline uh, than we were paying under Donald Trump. Uh, that hits every American. It disproportionately is impacting the poor middle class and people on fixed incomes. Then we've got wide open borders. American, Americans can see the disaster down there where you live in Texas. Uh, on top of that, people yeah. in every, every small town and big city, they're dealing with defund, dismantle, no bail laws, and that is resulting in record murder rates, violent crime, burglaries, you name it. Americans are tired of it, and they're also tired of this woke education being forced on their kids. Simple. Keep it simple. Look, I think that's exactly right. The top three issues in the country, according to national polling, are number one, inflation, and especially gas prices, number two, crime, and number three, illegal immigration. And all three of them, the Democrat far-left agenda of Biden and Harris and Pelosi and Schumer is a train wreck. And, and, and if you look at people are hurting, their lives are more difficult. If you're a young person coming out of school, the cost of rent's gone up, the cost of food's gone up. You don't have the ability to, to, to make basic ends meet. It's even worse if you're a young parent and you're trying to put diapers on your kid, you're trying to get baby formula for your kid, you're trying to get braces on your kid. All of those costs have gone through the roof. And, and then there's seniors. You know, if you've spent 30, 40 years saving, you've been responsible, you've done what you're supposed to do, you have a 401k, you have a retirement, and suddenly the Democrats get in power, and in two years, your retirement drops 20, 25, 30 percent. The average nationally is $34,000 that's dropped on 401ks. You got seniors who are living on that. They got a whole lot less retirement savings, and the cost 
of everything has skyrocketed. And I'll tell you, there are a lot of seniors who are getting ready to retire. I just read a recent story that said fully one third of seniors who are still working have decided to delay their retirement because now their retirement savings is hey, less Senator, and they can't afford it. People can are hurting, that. and that's why we're going to see the kind of tidal wave election. Yeah. The AP polling shows that 46% of Americans actually consider themselves poor right now. Uh, if you look at, and on top of everything you said wow. about 401ks, retirement plans, you're 100% right. Uh, but new home construction now has come to a screeching halt. Yes. Sale of pre-existing homes, that is coming to a screeching halt as well. Home prices are now plummeting because nobody wants to give up a, a 2.7 uh, 30-year fixed rate mortgage for a 7% 30-year fixed yep. rate mortgage. They can't afford to do that. Now home prices are on the way down as well. That means equity that you had in your home, equity that you had in your retirement account, it's all wiped away. Good job, Joe Biden. Well, and, and even worse, if the Democrats, God forbid, were to get elected, every one of these gets worse. I have never seen in my life two years a government do this much damage to the country. I, I don't think I thought it was possible that they would do this much damage, and they're engaged right now in blatant gaslighting. You know, Joe Biden is tweeting out, if you elect the Republicans, inflation will go higher. Like, what? What? You, you know, I mean, you, you, you've got the White House press secretary saying nobody's crossing our southern border, never mind the 4.4 million people that have crossed under you Joe see, Biden. They're just blatantly lying, and the corporate media is corrupt no, and Senator, repeats their wrong. lies. When Joe Biden said the, the economy is strong as hell, he told the truth. He's dreaming. Anyway, he was too engaged in eating his ice I, cream. So, <laughs> Senator, keep up the good work on your tour. You know, let, let them eat cake. That, that, that's a message that works well, and it's got a there good go. historical pedigree. Let him eat ice cream in a cone and lie about the economy. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.